Hello, Nitty friends. Welcome back. My name is Adrian of Trillacraft. And, uh, hi. I've actually come back in a fairly timely manner this time. And I want to say thank you so much to everyone who, um, commented and sent me messages about my last podcast because I was complaining uh, quite egregiously about my eyes. And, um... You guys had some really great ideas. So I went out and immediately picked up some uh, drugstore readers. And <laughs> I was like, I put my old eyes back on. I was so excited. I was like, oh, I can see. This is what I'm supposed to be able to do. I was super excited. So I did go see a proper optometrist, hence these bad boys right here. Ooh. Um, so uh, brand new optometrist. I'm still not sure I like optometrists in general. But, um, he delivered, so I can't really complain. I, I'm not sure I, he grumbled a little bit because, uh, you know when they put those things in front of your eyes and you go, is one better than two or is three better than four? And I'm just like, ah, they both look like crap. I can't tell. I can't tell either way. He didn't like the fact that I couldn't make a decision between one and two. I'm like, they both look like shit. I can't see. This is not helpful. Um. But once we got over that little hump, he delivered. So these are my computer glasses. So they're set up for reading on my computer. And he said, for doing really close work, like you're knitting, he's like, stick with the, with the cheap readers. I'm like, done. So I bought a whole bunch more pairs. So they're scattered all over my house now. Because every time I walk into a room, I go to do something. I'm like, I can't see it. I can't see anything. And I think what upsets me most is that I was struggling and being okay for so long. And then all of a sudden, there was this weird tipping point where all of a sudden I was like, I can't see anymore. And now I'm so frustrated because I'm so used to being able to see that I'm like, I just, I just get mad all the time. <laughs> so I need to figure out how to be okay with my eyes getting old because that's really what's happening. But other than that, everything with my eyes are good and healthy and I can knit again. And let me tell you what a difference that makes to my mojo. I had no idea. I just thought I was tired and that's why I wasn't knitting. Untrue. I just couldn't see it. Um, and so over the last few weeks, I have knit like a mad woman. I've been knitting all the time. It's been so much fun. I've been loving it. Whew. So I got lots to share today. Um, other than that, life is good. I've got my second vaccination booked for two weeks from now. So I will soon be fully vaccinated. Super excited about that. And work is good. I have one more week of work and then I'm on vacation for a while from both jobs. So I will actually get to rest. I have to move. So really not a ton of rest, but it's fine. It's it's not work. So it'll be it'll be restorative. It'll be good. Um and because Ontario's come out of lockdown and is slowly, very slowly starting to reopen, as you can see, I have not made it to a salon because they're not open yet so COVID hair rules the day but um I have been to a couple backyard campfires and and things like that and a few other small outdoor events that have been you know good for the soul good for the soul it's good to get out and see people like I know I'm a bit of a, an introvert I'm totally comfy cozy in my house but even I like to visit with people on occasion all right, let's talk about knitting. So, I, I have finishes. I have a lot of finishes, actually. I'm super excited about this. So, this was the second sock I was working on. Whoosh. Ha ha. So, this is a homespun house in Dumbledore's favorite with a contrast yarn dyed by Old Oak Yarns. And so that is my doo -doo -doo -doo, second sock. So I finished a pair, which always makes me happy. Then I knit a second, second sock. This is the White Tweed Dolphin by Vivid Yarn Studio. So proof is in the pudding, second sock, all finished. So super excited about that, really. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah, you can see all the nubbies. Neps, I think they're called, actually. 
You know what I mean. So that's awesome. Uh, and then I did a non-sock finish. Well, I know. So this has been on my needles for... I don't even know. Three years? A while. So this is... Uh, a pattern that was put out by Menos del Uruguay. Uh, it was meant to be knit with their Milo? Milos? Minis? I don't know. I ended up using, I had a bunch of minis from Sweet Georgia. Um, in their party of five sets, I had multiple of them, so I kind of picked and chose from multiple sets and put this one together. It has not been washed and blocked, so it's a little bit funky looking, but it's fine. So the name of the pattern is called Pirouette. So the neat thing is, is that it technically does not have any jogs. So it's a spiral knit. So if you look at the cast on, I've actually cast on all five colors on the same row, and then you just kind of move from one color to the next as you go down. So it does create these little these little lines, you can see right here. But I have a feeling that once I wash it and block it, those will go away. But I have not washed and blocked because I'd be lazy. And I don't really want to pull out my pins and my blocking mats because I gotta, they need to be packed and I, Mostly I'm just being lazy. Who am I kidding? So yeah. So I don't like the cast off edge because it's a little flary, which I don't love. The cast on edge is much more pulled in. But I think once I wash it and block it, it will be just fine. So yeah, I'm super excited about this. Totally my colors. Starting to learn how to deal with glasses. See, now you guys are all fuzzy. <laughs> Oh, that's gonna look great. It'll be great with a jean jacket and a fall. Just, ah, nice. So yeah. <sighs> An actual whip finish. Who knew? Who knew? And I have one more finish. And this, I knit both the first and the second sock. Isn't that amazing? So I was about here <laughs> all the time you saw them. And so I've knit all this and all this. So the green is Velvet Pink Cushion by Menos del Uruguay Alegria. And the contrast is a mini from Lolo Did It called Fairy Pools. So uh, I would like you to count that as one, two, three, Four socks I completed in the last, since the last podcast. Four socks. Four socks. And a cowl. I will say the pattern called for this to be like 13 and a half inches from edge to edge. Mine is 10 and a half inches because I have a short neck and I be lazy. So I, uh, I loved how these looked. I didn't love knitting this because I had to navigate five balls at a time. Insert joke here. And um, you couldn't get into a rhythm because you had to keep stopping, dropping a yarn like every 32 stitches or something ridiculous like that. I had to stop, drop a yarn, pick up a yarn, keep moving. Uh, and there was just no rhythm and no flow to it. So I didn't, didn't love that. So when it got long enough, I was good with that. All right, there was something else I wanted to talk about today. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, way back in January, I was talking about the Little Red Mitten, Carrie and Jolyn, and they had this 100 days challenge. So you weren't supposed to cast on for 100 days. And so I had, just, by the time I heard about this challenge, I had just cast on like five or six new pairs of socks. Oops. Um, but I said, okay, no problem. So I think as of January 7th or 9th or something like that, that's when I was like, okay, I'm doing the challenge, 100 days. So that would have been like mid-April. 
It is now June 19th, June, June 20th. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Um, it's June 20th. And other than two second socks, which don't count for me as cast-ons because nothing is added to my list, um, I haven't cast, cast on anything since the very beginning of January when I cast on a bunch of for socks. I couldn't believe it. And I still, I'm not really bothered by that. So I did, I did a thing. So I'm just gonna keep not casting on for a while. So I went and picked up, well, rephrase that, I had it delivered, uh, a new little journal. And in this journal, I decided to record all of my works in progress. And so I sat down and I went through all of my baskets and all of the cubbies and hidey holes <laughs> that my projects are in. And I wrote them all down and I even frogged a couple. So I ended up frogging five projects. I frogged a scrappy square blanket that I had started and you know, it was that big and that's when I stopped. Um, my Wonder Woman shawl, which I had cast on back in like 2017. And I cast it on, screwed it up, pulled it out, and never cast it back on again. But the yarn and the, everything was sitting in a bag. Forget it, not doing it. I pulled out my Fading Point by Hohilo Kuntelli. Um I was this far into it anyway. Um, I had a pair of cozy mitts. Uh, they were color work that I had started. I never got anywhere with them. I had a cuff and like two lines of color work and that was it. Ripped those out. And I also had a new, st and I just started this one too. It was a blanket I started a little while ago called Patchwork Triangles. And I, I just, I'm not now, not right now. So I ripped that one out too because it wasn't very far. It's, you know, a quarter of a patchwork square into it. So I frogged five. So at the time that I made this list, which was at the end of May, I had not finished the pirouette cowl, this guy. So that one was still on the list. So I had eight works in progress. My Russell Street shawl, my pirouette cowl, a multi-directional scarf, vanilla flip mitts, the A pillow, an ardent shawl, an odyssey shawl, and a typhoon shawl. So that's eight and now it's down to seven go me, which is actually not an unreasonable amount of works in progress for me. I'm like, ah, it's only seven. It's no big deal. Yeah, hold on a sec. Then I looked up my blankets. I now have four blankets on the go. A granny rectangle blanket, a granny square blanket, so those two are both crochet. My pine forest baby blanket, which I really think I might pull out. I still have to think about that one a little bit more. And my flyaway blanket. So four blankets. I have Four sweaters listed here, but really only two. So I've got the Ravello and my Love Note on the needles. And then I've swatched for the Knife Grinder's Daughter, but never actually cast on. And I've got the yarn for the Gallant sweater, um, which I haven't cast on. I bought the yarn because a friend and I were going to cast on together, but then I wasn't casting on, and then it was... I didn't get around it. So... I want to cast it on and once I've moved into my new place that actually has air conditioning and I actually want to knit with a bulky bulky weight yarn um I will start it but not not quite yet so I really only have two sweaters on the on the go so that's as of right now twelve or thirteen depending if I pull out the pine forest baby blanket if I frog that that's not that many whips. Except we haven't talked about socks yet, have we? So at the end of May, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I had t 22 pairs of socks on the needles. 22. Um, but I have since finished two pairs. I had to think about this a little bit because I'm like, ah, I 
finished three pairs of socks, how come only two are knocked off this list? It's because I had finished Dumbledore's favorite before I had created this list. So, regardless to say, I am now down to 20 <laughs> pairs of socks on the needles. But now I know what bag they're all in and what yarn it is, so I can find stuff very quickly, which is fun. And then at the end of the book, I now have finishes for 2021. So I have finished two regular finishes, my Hitchhiker Beyond and my Pirouette Cowl, and I have finished six pairs of socks. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? So I'm excited to keep track of all that sort of stuff. Ooh, something I have to show you one sec. So I currently have 20 pairs of needles, 20 pairs of needles on my socks. 20 pairs of socks on my needles. But I've taken a few off. So theoretically, I could cast on nine more pairs of socks. <laughs> and I know that I'm using this size for my vanilla flip mitts. So that means I have 30 pairs of sock needles just in the normal size that I use, my 2.5 millimeter. I've also got like four or five two millimeter needles. And that's not including any of my DPNs either. I have a lot of needles. We will not be casting all these on right now. <laughs> not gonna do it. Um, so I have been working on other stuff. Surprise, I've had time. This scares me a little bit. Goats falling off a cliff. Makes me happy. So this was originally a first sock. So all I had was the cuff done. But I've also they just need heels. Afterthought heels. That's it. I knit the entire rest of the socks. So Realistically, that is almost six socks in three weeks, three and a half weeks. That is a lot of knitting, my friends, plus the cowl, plus some more knitting. Holy crap. That's what happens when I get my eyes back. It's so exciting. I want to knit all the time. So yeah, so this is Nomadic Yarns in the colorway Neville. I just love that turquoise and that pop of green is just killer. I love these socks and don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, there you go. Sparkle, they're sparkle socks. So they've got glitter in them. So that's really awesome. Some Stellina. So yeah, all I have to do is put in two heels, which I will hopefully do this week. Well, I will definitely do this week and I'll have another pair of socks. So I've actually finished, officially, six pairs of socks. So I'm actually ahead of schedule for my monthly sock allotment. Because I, as usual, try to do 12 pairs of socks for me a year. And so I'm right on schedule and I will have another number seven finished before the end of June, at least, if not more. So, woo, that's exciting. So yeah almost another pair and yesterday I was out at um, Little Red Mitten one of my local yarn shops and they were having a delayed worldwide knit in public day so a bunch of us went and sat and knit outside it was a beautiful day for it it was a little bit overcast so it wasn't too hot but it wasn't cold it was lovely and so I got to see real people. That always makes me happy. And so this is a bit of a unicorn. This is Sock Yarn by Leo and Roxy. So the people that own Little Red Mitten are also the dyers behind Leo and Roxy here and Co. And when they first started dyeing, they used to do a little bit of self-striping. They no longer do self-striping. They will probably never do self-striping again. So this is a bit of a unicorn a rarity. So this is a colorway called Delirious. And it's just big, fat, beautiful stripes. I love it. So I'm almost at the heel. 
but I'm gonna do an after the thought heel on these, so I will just keep knitting. But yeah, I got half a sock done. Nice. So, yeah. That's in my sparkly bat bag. So, whew, I have been like socktastic recently. It's been, it does help that we've been doing some training at, at work, um, and it's like one to four p.m. once a week. So I sit and knit like a crazy person. I'm like, I'm at work. But it allows me to pay attention, so it makes a big difference in my retention levels. So it's been good. I have a couple acquisitions. N not too many. One of them is expected. This is my Yarn of the Month Club. The Harry Potter Yarn of the Month Club from Freckled Whimsy. This one is number eight. It is called... The cat's meow. Oh, sorry. There we go. That's beautiful. Very peachy. Lots of greens and dark blues and gorgeous things like that. So yeah, I think this one is uh has to do with McGonagall because you know her transfiguration into a cat, that sort of stuff. So nice, nice club. And then I got my other club, the second installment of the Leo and Roxy Yarn Co. Um, inspired. There we go. So it's turquoise and peach, and it comes with two minis, so it's got this beautiful rich dark teal and then the salmon-y pink one. So really pretty, really springy. There we go, that was... That was the inspiration picture for it. Pretty much matches it exactly. So yeah. So that's all good. So that's fun. And then the pin for it this year. So if you can see on there, her hat is a little like paper ship with an anchor. So that's what they made. Cute, huh? And then, because I was at Little Red Mitten yesterday, I actually went into the shop for a few minutes because, you know, they have a capacity of six right now, which is awesome. So we all took turns tr trundling in there. And so I have not tried their new basics line yet. So I bought this one, which is called Antique Aubergine. It's just a gorgeous, rich, rich purple. I love it. It is so such soft like it's like it has no ability to stand up straight it is so soft and so plush and so lovely it is a bit of a thinner yarn it's a tighter spin tighter twist um but i have a skein of their marled yarn which is the same consistency um and once i finish those marled socks that i'm working on what i want to do is do a purple sock and use the marled for the contrast so that's why this was bought because it is beautiful it is it is thinkingly soft it's so dumb like i don't understand how it's so soft but it's gorgeous and then i really should look through my supply of leo and roxy in my stash because i probably already own this but it's pretty so i buy it again this one is called pink moon and it's just i know it's a pinky purple I just couldn't say no to. I bet you any amount of money I bought this before, but oh well. It's really, really pretty. That's actually looking really great with that. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows what I'll do, but it's so nice. So lovely new yarns. I'm always happy to support my local store. Yeah, so that's everything. Uh, yeah, it's good to be knitting again. It feels so good to be knitting like a mad woman again. I'm loving every second of it. I've been listening to audiobooks and watching like soccer on TV and all sorts of all the things that kind of help aid my my knitting. I've uh, I've really kind of 
settled into a bit of a routine with that and it's been really lovely. All right, that's it, that's all. This will likely be the last podcast from this location as I move in less than three weeks. And uh, hopefully you'll get to see my new place. So it'll be great, looking forward to it. I haven't even seen it. <laughs> I have no idea what it looks like, it's so weird. It's very weird to move in the time of COVID because, um, because there are people living in the unit that I'm moving into, the rental unit I'm moving into, I can't go in and look at it. Um, so I kind of said yes, kind of blind. I know what the outside looks like. I know what the floor plan looks like, but I have no idea what the actual, what it's like really inside. So that'll be a bit of an experience, but that's okay. Cause I actually get the keys a couple days before I move. So I have time to lock through it and figure out where furniture goes and things like that. So <sighs> you'll get to see it soon. Fun. All right. Happy knitting. Love you lots. 